to move the ball down the field. Yes, I'm a, you'll find as, as you hear me more, I'm a sucker for any kind of sports metaphor. I can't help myself. And you can't continue to move forward if you're always looking over your shoulder to see who might be about to tackle. To continue the sports analogy, I didn't sign on at the NEA to spend all of my time there playing defense. So what I'm going, so what am I going to add on top of Bill and Dana's foundation? Some visibility, I hope, and attention, and maybe even some outspokenness. But most importantly, a concerted effort to bring arts, arts, the arts into domestic policy. Too often, the arts are considered some sort of stepchild. We too often are considered elitist, and too often we are considered not worthy of public support. When the NEA received 50 million of stimulus money to distribute to save jobs in our sector, one congressman asked publicly, how can we spend 50 million dollars on the National Endowment for the Arts when that money could be spent creating real jobs like road building? Yes. That, actually, that actually was said. I'm not making it up. <laughs> Never mind that our 50 million is one six thousandth of one percent of the federal budget. <laughs> More importantly, how can you say to a musician who through long study and practice and talent and perseverance has risen to play first violin in a symphony orchestra, a musician who may have a mortgage to pay and two kids to go through college, how can you say to that musician that she does not have a real job? So in response to that congressman, to anyone who shares those views, I have two short words. <laughs> I have a simple two-word declaration, artworks. And those two words say everything, everything that we are about now at the, at the NEA. Artworks is a triple entendre. Some of you know that I'm an ex-academic, so I tend to like plays on words and anything like that. Uh, but let me talk a little bit about, about what, we, what we mean when we say artworks. Of course, artworks is a noun which encompasses the stuff at the center of what we do. Artworks are the achievement of arts, plays, dances, performances, songs, books, paintings, films, operas, etc. It is the job of the NEA to fund artworks, to support artworks, and we do, and I, we do it as well as, as well as we can. Secondly, artworks is the sentence that describes the very activity that I mentioned earlier. Artworks on and within people to change and inspire. It addresses the need we all have to create, to imagine, to aspire to something more, to become, if only for a few moments, more than we've been. It is the most hopeful of human activities, and one of the most essential. And finally, and maybe most important, at least for that congressman, art works remind us that art's jobs are real jobs. The 5.7 million people who have full-time arts-related jobs in this country are part of the real economy. They pay taxes and spend money, obviously. But we're going to be making a point beyond that. Any discussion of policy for coming out of this recession any plan that addresses economic growth and urban and neighborhood revitalization has to include the arts. We know that when you bring art and artists into the center of town, that town changes. Look around New York City. The Brooklyn Academy of Music has been the catalyst for the transformation of a neighborhood and a cultural district. Up in Spanish Harlem, PS 109 is a former public school that is being transformed by art space into artists living, working, and performance space. Look at the point in the South Bronx, St. George in Staten Island, and Flushing Meadows Corona Park in Queens. But also look beyond New York. Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Paducah, Kentucky have been transformed by arts districts. North Adams, Massachusetts, and Martha, Texas are now known for the contemporary art they have. Look at the craft trails in Appalachia, the dance festivals in Vail and Aspen, the opera in Santa Fe. In my hometown of St. Louis, City Garden, the public sculpture park, has provided a reason for people to linger downtown rather than just get in their cars after the Cardinals game and drive back to the suburbs. In Chicago, Illinois, don't even get me started. <laughs> Mayor, Mayor Daly 
should be the number one hero to everyone in this country who cares about art, because he was a visionary in this field before it was a field. His work, I should add, began in 1989, 13 years before New York City elected its own great arts advocate, Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Bloomberg. <coughs> Daly spent public money to restore the old vaudeville houses in Chicago and create a bustling downtown theater district. He built Millennium Park with its dynamic arts institutions, installations, and connected it to the Art Institute of Chicago. And now both are powerful attractions for Chicagoans and tourists. It sometimes seems like he's created an arts festival for every single neighborhood in the city. Mayor Daly and Mayor Bloomberg may love art. They're tough guys. We're focused every day on the ledger of their city's economies. Create an art scene downtown, and small towns have downtowns also, and you change the place. Artists are great placemakers. They're entrepreneurs. They're small businessmen, really. And they should be the centerpiece of every town's strategy for the future. We know now that business follows labor, not the other way around. A uh, strong footnote here to, to Richard Florida's work, to his research and the data that he's collected, that has formed an important basis for a lot of the work we're going to be doing uh, at, at the NEA. But we've learned through his work and others that companies seek a highly skilled workforce, and that workforce seeks places for the high quality of life. And at the top quality of the quality of life criteria are education and culture. Business follows people, and people follow other people. To twist the great line from Field of Dreams, the sports metaphor again. Um, if you come, they will build it. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's true. Bring, bring art and artists into a neighborhood, and you transform that neighborhood. It has been proven, we have the data, that when you have a community with a strong cultural presence, a lot, several very, very important things happen. First of all, there's more cohesion to the community. Those who are involved in the arts are much more likely to be involved in civic engagement overall. There is a proven record that where you have a strong arts presence, there's lower juvenile delinquency and truancy. And finally, we found that the presence of arts and cultural institutions is, in fact, a poverty fighter. I started touring the country, visiting neighborhoods and towns all across America, seeing and spotlighting all the ways that art works. I began my tour in Peoria. I did play Peoria. And, uh, and I witnessed some extraordinary things there. A building of artists' studios is at the heart of the Riverfront Warehouse. And just nine months ago, as the economy was still souring, the arts and union labor, which is remarkable, I think, joined together and passed a tax increase in Peoria to help re relocate its Lakeview Museum from the outskirts of town to the center of this district. I met folks from the local opera and ballet companies, each of, each of which are over a century old. I met the cast of Rent, and I heard about the Cornstalk Theater season, which began with the rabbit hole and included the goat, of who, uh, who is Sylvia, and concluded with Speed the Plow, a pretty interesting season. I had to promise Mike Ross that when I got back to Peoria, I will also make the drive over to Urbana, Illinois, to see what he's doing uh, at Cranch. Yes. I promise. <laughs> okay. Um, I went back to St. Louis. I've been to Nashville, and at the end of this week, I'm headed, uh, headed to Memphis to take a look specifically at, at music and musicians. We were sending up visits to California, Idaho, Kentucky, Washington State, uh, and others. But I cannot get everywhere. And I also need to hear from, from each of you about the ways that art works in your towns and cities. You've been working hard, doing for years what I'm just starting to talk about. I not only like sports metaphors, I also love the cliches. So let me just say that we, we here at the, uh, at the NEA are starting to talk the talk, but all of you here have been walking that walk now for quite a long time, and I think there's a lot that I can learn from, from, uh, from all of you. 